Jim Edwards here in Tokyo, Japan, ahead of one, a new era which goes down on Sunday night at the infamous Sumo Hall Arena here in Tokyo. Standing to my right is Stefan Romare of MMA Knits, and to my left, Liam Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Um, gentlemen, what a night we have in store for us on Sunday. Um, let's start off with, I guess, uh, Demetrius Johnson making his uh, one championship debut. Uh, Stefan, I'll start with you. Like uh, You've seen DJ uh, this week. Um, what have you kind of made of his attitude leading into in, in guess his one championship debut and um, what do you think he has in store for him on Sunday? I mean he seems to be fired up uh, nice to be in a new organization I guess it could get kind of stale to be in the same organization and go through the same fight week over and over he's fighting Yuya Wakamatsu uh, I think he's a good opponent a little bit weird to fight someone coming off a loss but tournament champion so it's a tough test for him I I'm I'm thinking he's going to win, but I'm hoping for a, a competitive and good fight. Uh, we saw them kind of stare down earlier in the week at the press conference, Liam. Uh, Wakamatsu looked to have quite a distinct kind of height advantage over him. Do you think that's going to play any factor in the fight at all? I don't think it'll play a factor. I think everyone was a bit surprised, though, with the size difference when we saw him on the stage. But I don't think it'll play a factor. I, DJ's, I, don't think, I can't see him anything phasing him, really. Um, like I say, it's interesting that he's, he's fighting someone who's coming off a loss, but he's also coming off a loss himself. So it, it makes it a bit more interesting. So even if he does win, he hasn't fought the, 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 the top, top, top one championship guys yet. So it would be interesting to see if he does win, how the tournament plays out as we go forward. For sure, and obviously Eddie Alvarez also making his one championship debut. Um, Liam, I'll, I'll go back to you. What, what have you kind of made of Eddie this week? We've not actually seen that much of him. We just uh, saw him at the press conference. But have you been able to catch up with him at all this week? And, um, you know, what do you kind of think uh, his opponent, uh, Nastutskin, kind of has in store for him on Sunday? Well, that's, I think that's more interesting than the DJ fight. And uh, back to your first point. Yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of Eddie all week, really. Um, but I think that's going to be a bit more fascinating. I think Timothy is going to be more aggressive which I think could make it interesting, although it could end early because of that aggression. So that's going to be interesting again, a bit like the DJ fight. Both guys are coming off a loss there as well. So the two fights that probably the West is looking forward to the most is involving four guys coming off a loss, which is pretty crazy, especially the, the caliber of the four guys as well. Um, Stefan, do you think we're going to see a successful return to Japan for the Underground King on Sunday? I think so, and I think it's going to be a violent fight. He's the underground king, he's the king of violence, so I think we're going to see a great fight. I, I think it might go into the second round, Ed will feel, feel him out a little bit in the first, and uh, I, I think he prepared, he said he prepared with the uh, Dagestani wrestlers and stuff, so I think he's, uh, he's going to be able to keep the fight standing and just land his uh, vicious, vicious hands on Nasiukin on Sunday. So we've also got uh, four title fights that are going to be topping the card. Um, Leo, I'll throw to you. Which one of these uh, four title fights are you most looking forward to? Probably the Angel Lee, Jing Jong Nan fight. That's really interesting. Well, yeah, I keep changing my mind. That one, Kevin Bellion, Bibiana Fernandez. That's going to be fascinating. Trilogy fight. Team Lakai, the king of rematches. Can they do it in a trilogy? And they're, they're brilliant at coming up game plans when their fighters lost but coming off a win it's slightly different dynamics that's going to be interesting um Ong Long Song as well it's coming off a five round war so you can't help but look forward to that one yeah all, all four really yeah I mean there's so much to look forward to um, personally I'm looking forward to the Ong Long Song uh, rematch with Ken Hazegawa what a fight that was last year um Stefan do you think uh Ong Long Song who's obviously the champion do you think it's going to be uh approaching this one a bit differently to last time. It was an absolute slugfest, five rounds. Yeah, I think, as you said in your interview, I think he's going to look to finish it early. And I think after a five-round war with someone like that, you can kind of, I guess, figure out where the holes are. And he got to finish in the fifth. So if he can find those same holes, uh, maybe in the first or second, uh, I think we want to see the champ uh, defending his title and, and finishing it uh, in the within the first three rounds. I guess one of the most... Uh, interesting questions heading into tomorrow night is can Angela Lee become the first woman in one championship history to hold two consecutive titles um, Liam what do you think do you reckon she's going to do it again it's so interesting Jing Jong Nan's probably going to be aggressive and it, it's, it's going to depend a little bit on how fast Angela Lee can f find her feet she hasn't fought for a year the fight before that was the year before that so if Angela can hit the ground running, I'd say she's going to be the favourite. And if she can get to the ground, obviously, she's going to be the favourite. 
but it's going to be interesting there to see how Jing Jong Nan can cope if it does go to the ground and how aggressive she is if she can land a punch. Obviously, Mei Yamaguchi hurt Angela Lee a couple of times in their last fight, and you've got to say Jing Jong Nan's probably got a lot more power in her hands. Yeah, she certainly does. So, um, ending. Uh, I guess the evening and I guess one championship's biggest fight card of all time the legend Shinya Aoki is going to look to uh, reclaim that one lightweight title against Edward Foliang um, we've seen this one play out before as well uh, Stefan do you think this ends any differently do you think Aoki can uh, kind of level up the series with Foliang or not uh, I don't think so like just seeing his demeanor and he's not approaching the fight any different than the first time and he just so he says yeah he just seems super disinterested even to be fighting so uh, not being motivated not wanting the title back not seemingly not changing anything in the game plan I think uh, Fola Yang is gonna is gonna take it again maybe uh, I guess even uh, with a finish this time well, guys, has uh, anything surprised you apart from maybe the weather this week? It's absolutely freezing out here um, in Tokyo. But, um, Liam, has anything kind of surprised you this week or has anything kind of caught your eye being here in Tokyo ahead of the fight night? Uh, not so much, but back to sort of Shinyoki. He's kind of like that before every fight. He kind of goes into it like doesn't want to be here. He's very strange, very unique. But then he's a killer inside the cage or the ring. So I think that could be more interesting. I think he's going to be more dangerous than people think. Uh, but surprising, not really, again, apart from how cold it is. One thing surprised me is Angela, Angela Lee's kind of demeanour this week. Um, normally, like, and especially over the last few years, obviously she's had a few uh, things going on outside of the cage and injury. She's come across a bit shy, almost a, um, a bit... I don't want to say mentally unstable, but fragile at times, I think is the right word. This week, she's looked super happy to be here. Made weight easily, obviously being up at straw weight this time. I'm excited to see how she's going to perform on Sunday. Stefan, what about you? I know uh, you had a chat with Gary Tonin yesterday. Um, you know, how's he liking life here in Tokyo? I think he loves it. I mean, he has a lot a lot of Japanese fans and he's a chatty Cathy in a definitely po positive way. So it was uh, one, uh, I asked him uh, a question and he just went off. And I, I mean, he's, he's taking this extremely seriously. He was talking about in another interview about his ADHD. So I guess like applying the ADHD to training. And I mean, he, he's one of the best in jiu-jitsu if he can... If I can uh, replicate that in in striking, and also, I mean, being being such a good jiu-jitsu guy, it, op it opens up his striking. Like people are s so afraid of him taking it to the ground. So uh, he he seems happy to be back here. I think it's going to be one hell of a fight. Um, he's taking it super seriously, talking about like he doesn't want to get hit, he doesn't want to get hurt. He's like a little bit. None of them do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, not all of them talk about it. So I, I like I like that attitude that you're. It's a fist fight. You, you should be scared because you're, you're putting your health on the line. So, yeah, I think he's going to get it done. He's going to be 4 0 as a mixed martial artist. And, yeah, maybe it's time for a ste step up uh, later in the year. Guys, let's, let's uh, leave it on this. Um, Liam, what's fight of the night tomorrow going to be? Oh, that's a million dollar question. I don't know. The thing is, I mean, this is, this is a card that has so many names on it. There's, but it's not just the names, the matchups are so intriguing. Mm. Uh, it's, I can't even answer that. I, I'm looking forward to every single fight, and I, I mean, outside of it, there's the Reese McLaren, mm -hmm. Kara Akhmatov fight going to be fascinating in the, in the flyweight Grand Prix. Well, I'm just looking forward to every one, really. Stefan, can you be a bit more decisive? I'm going to say uh, the King of Islands, Eddie Alvarez versus Timofey Nasiukin. Uh, they're going to deliver, and if it's not going to be that fight, it's going to be the rematch between uh, Ken Hasegawa and Onlong Sang. And of course, we have the we have some amazing kickboxing fights. Uh, a rematch ten years in the making. Yod Senkai Fairtex, my Thai brother, and uh, Andy Sauer. Yeah. Uh, that fight's going to be great. I hope we get to see the classic uh, Evisu pants in the in the octagon again. And it's going to be interesting to see like how, how how the matchup changes now that it's in a cage and under the ring. So definitely looking forward to that one. Great stuff, guys. So. Um Check our social medias for start times tomorrow. I believe if you're in America, you can watch it on Bleacher Report Live. Uh, that'll be on Twitter. And I believe if you're in the UK or wider Europe, you can just watch it on YouTube, on the One Championship YouTube channel, and via the app as well. So there you go, guys. Um, I hope you enjoy the fights tomorrow. I've been Jim Edwards. He's been Stefan Romari. He has been Liam Jennings. And we'll catch you all tomorrow. Yeah.